Hey, we're going to get rolling here this week, and, uh, and the one thing we'd have to say is volatility is alive and well in these grain markets right now, which makes it, makes it very challenging. But here we want to take a look at a, a weekly corn chart and where old crop corn is, and if you're sitting on some old crop corn in the bin, maybe considering the sale. The line up on top is $8 in here, and that's what everyone says. Boy, I'd like to get $8 for corn, but keep in mind right now you got July corn around $7.60. But if you look at July of 23 corn, it's down at 665. That's where as we as we move ahead in here right now, this premium that old crop has to new is probably going to narrow up. And we really think you've got to look at pricing out if you're holding on to some of those bushels. And if you are bullish, you're better off owning all the way out to July uh, futures out at 665 than continuing to hold the cash. I mean, I had a producer the other day mention to me, you know, it worked out well, you know, dumping my cash bushels in here last fall and owning it back on paper then sitting here and paying some storage that way. I think that's something you've got to consider on some of these old crop bushels in here. On this next uh, a slide we have in here, I just wanted to put where futures are at today. You got July 22 at 759. You got Dees 22 at 661. You got July 23 out at 665. So if you're a believer that corn has got to go to the 750 or $8 area, again, sell the old crop cash here, go out farther and buy a, buy a futures contract. Historically, unless we have exceptionally tight ending carryouts, and this year's it's around 1.4 billion. The drought years back in 2011, 2012, it was under a billion bushels. Holding old crop corn much past May, June, July tends not to pay off. That's where you got to look at pushing the inventory out and if positive, buying back on futures. Now with the volatility of this last week, you know, we want to show you the charts that we look at in here on a daily basis. This is a December corn market. And a big question we get is how much of a bounce back can we get? What we like using is retracement levels. So if we do a, a simple 50% retracement from the recent high up above 760 down to the low at 644, that pegs us in here around 705 on where this market could bounce back towards. You know, so I mean our target in here right now on a bounce back for a sale goes 690 to 720. And where we think that's a realistic target is we just hear a ton right now. Boy, if corn gets back to 750, I would like to make the sale. If everyone is saying they want to sell at 750, that kind of quizzes us a big question whether if we can really get back to that point. We just went through a retracement on the daily chart, but we think we can apply it as well on the weekly chart. And, a, and, and looking at a retracement here from the 2020 low down at 301 up to this year's high at 827, a 50% retracement gets us down to the 564 area. Therefore, if you're looking ahead to new crop Dees corn and saying, look, it, I've got more of a bearish bias in here. If we raise a normal crop, where can this market go down towards 626, 564, then 501 would all be legitimate downside targets. As we get over to the bean side of it, this bean market on this steep break held support at the $14 level. So where can we bounce back to? Again, you put a retracement level in there, 50% from the high to the low. That comes in around 1490. The 38% the retracement's at 1470. Today's high on beans was 1368 and three quarters. Again, we would, excuse me, it's 1468 and three quarters, not 1368 and three quarters. When you, when you look at a, a, this chart in here as a whole, we're using that target of 1470 to 1515 to make a new crop sale. Just like corn, we hear a lot of comments that boy, if beans get back to 1550, we would make a sale. That looks to us to be a little bit of a reach. Again, a retracement on the downside in here right now, pegs of 38% retracement on the weekly chart at 1401. The low this last week on soybeans was around 14 bucks. If we break below there, you're looking at 1280 as your next downside target, and then 1165. We're not saying these markets are going to head back down to these levels, but what we are saying is if once we start moving on momentum, these are targets, whether if you're looking at a higher or a lower move. Hitting quick here on July Chicago wheat, the retracement support from the contract low last summer to the contract high comes in here at 957. You see we broke through that and are trying to hold $9 area, area with 880 as some retracement support. On a bounce back on wheat, we think 10 to 10.50 is realistic. 
Here's a weekly chart on July Chicago wheat. And again, you put that retracement level in there around 850 on it. 965 is another area. I don't think we've got to get wheat back pushing much above 1050. Now, as we want to wrap up in here today, um, you know, this, this corn market, it, it did break lower. We had a pretty good range of 690 to 750. We broke lower, 650 held in here. Beans were in an uptrend, went down and held $14 key support. We think that these areas are going to hold as support, but our concern on the grain market as a whole is that the upside momentum has been broken in here and it'll be difficult to gather steam going up unless we have an extreme weather issue out there, which seems unlikely right now. We do have some weather uncertainty though to offer some support. When marketing cash grain, you need to know if there's carry or no carry in the market. We think producers have got to have some price objectives in place. The same thing needs to be said about end users. I think one of the most important things to do with these markets right now is to focus on the big move. Don't get caught up in day-to-day -day moves of five to 10 cents. These markets can move one to $2. The last thing is, is we still have weather in front of us. We got a big report coming out on Thursday. We'll do another webinar then. You look at energy prices, you have the war still going on. You add all that up. This volatility is going to continue on the market. We need to be patient, but we also got to reward rallies from a producer standpoint and end users have got to look at pullbacks saying, hey, these are margins we can live with as well. Again, you know, thanks for tuning in. We're going to update our daily advisory report. Any questions, you know, uh, drop us an email, give us a call. Have a great day.